I have in my hand a capacitor, and I previously discharged it, which is, a, is an important part of capacitors. And we are going to do a three-part series on capacitors. And before we do, let's briefly talk about where you find them. You will find them often in motor circuits. Some motors require them, but really you find them in all kinds of electronics, including power supplies. They're in all kinds of electronics. So it's not something that, that's uncommon in the electrical industry. Welcome to our first video on capacitors. And I have uh, before me the same capacitor we had previously. This is a capacitor that you would find in like a motor circuit. And then the ones I have on the board would be more what you would see when you're dealing with electronics. And the first thing we really want to ask ourselves is, what is a capacitor? And I have a sheet for you and it should appear on the screen behind me here. And a capacitor is a device that stores energy in an electrostatic field. I like to think of it as being a really big static charge. And the thing to remember about a capacitor is when it discharges, it acts more like a static discharge. It's a really sudden snap and it releases a lot of energy and a lot of capacitors have a lot of current. So we really have to be cognizant of that. And you can see on the board that we have capacitor constructions and symbols. And the capacitor construction, when you look at it, it has two plates which are conductive and they're separated by a dielectric. And connected to the plates are, on this capacitor are leads, and on this one you can see we have terminals on the top. These are connected to the plates within the capacitor. And it really is pretty basic construction. It's just two plates that are separated by a dielectric. And when you apply current to the leads, uh, some sort of electric source to it, it forces all of the electrons on one plate, and then when you remove the current, it stores all the electrons on the one side and they would really like to get back to the other plate because there's basically holes that want to be filled on the other plate, but they cannot go through the dielectric. But if you attach to either the terminals or you attach to the leads on a capacitor with a circuit, it supplies a route for the electrons to go back. And you'll also notice on here, you have non-polarized capacitor and the symbol for a polarized capacitor and a variable capacitor. And really at a very simple, basic level, the two types of capacitors that we really have to talk about are the non-polarized capacitor and a polarized capacitor. And a non-polarized capacitor would be used in an AC circuit, whereas a polarized capacitor is only used in a DC circuit. The next thing we need to talk about are the units of measure for a capacitor, and they are measured in terms of farads. And the thing to understand about farads is one farad is a huge, huge number. And when you start looking at capacitors, you're actually looking at measurements that are on the decimal point side of things. And so the first thing you'll see is a microfarad, and it is 10 to the negative six of a farad, so it's one millionth of a farad. And then the next one is a nanofarad, and that is 10 to the negative ninth of a farad, and that is one billionth of a farad. And then finally you have picofarads, and that is 10 to the negative 12 of a farad, and that is one trillionth of a farad. So they're very, very small numbers. And we already talked about the polarized and non-polarized and difference between those. And when you're talking about capacitors, or I should say, when you're working with them, the very first thing you want to do is look for physical damage if you're about to start working with one and you want to take measurements. Most often, if there's a problem with a capacitor, there's bulging on the capacitor, or you might find some sort of fluids leaking out of it, or you might see burn marks, but you always want to look for that first. And a good majority of the time, if there's a problem with capacitor, you will notice it just by looking at it. And then the next thing we want to talk about is discharging a capacitor. Like I mentioned previously, capacitors can store an awful lot of energy and they release it very quickly. And you need to make sure that you disconnect the capacitor from the circuit or isolate it in some fashion. And then you need to discharge the capacitor to make sure that there is no stored energy left in it. And once you do that, the magic number is 10 volts on that. If you test it, you wanna make sure that you're below 10 volts because that is kind of the magic number, num number on that. And uh, really the, the purpose of the lab that we're going to go to in a minute is going to show you how 
to discharge the capacitor so that you can safely work with it. Here in a moment, we're going to drop the table down and we're going to show you how to safely discharge a capacitor. Before we do that though, let's talk about a couple of items here. I have a, a pair of gloves. They're rubber insulated gloves and also leather protective gloves. And I have safety glasses. And when you discharge a capacitor, if you do not know if it is fully charged or not, you need to wear your gloves and you need to wear your safety glasses while you're discharging it. And when we do our lab, I'm going to uh, actually have a nine volt battery I'm going to use to charge the capacitors and we'll be using the nine volts. I'm going to wear this stuff just to show you how you wear it, but you wouldn't really have to with nine volts, but I just want to show you how you safely discharge a capacitor before you start working with one of them. So we'll drop down here in a moment and we'll show you how all that works. As you can see, I've got the battery connected to our capacitor. I've applied a charge to it. It is only nine volts. So it's perfectly safe for me to, to work with this. I'm going to remove this now when I, before I put my gear on, before I pretend we're working with a circuit that requires the gear. And I will show you this. There are two ways that you can readily discharge a capacitor. One of them is a device like this, is something I made. This is a 20,000 ohm, five watt resistor that I've connected to 600 volt rated leads, they're number 14 wire, and you can use this you can attach it to the, each side of the capacitor and use that to discharge. Or you can buy capacitor discharge tools like this, devices like this one. And uh, I'll show you how both of them work in a moment. But either way is acceptable. Uh, it just depends on your preference, I would guess. So I'm going to put my safety gloves on and we'll come back and I'll show you how this works. I've got my discharge device here and I've got my capacitor charged. And you can see I've got my probes ready to touch the two tabs on the capacitor. And when I do, you should see this light glow for just a moment as the capacitor starts to discharge, and then it should dim down as the capacitor fully discharges. There you go, you can see that glow for just a moment, and then we fully discharged. And so we know that we're safe to operate on this capacitor, I should say work with this capacitor. The second way we might discharge a capacitor is with a device like I made here. It's the 20,000 ohm resistor, five watt resistor that we can connect across the capacitor. And I will do that. I'll connect this with alligator clips on one side and then alligator clips on the other. And then I let it sit for at least five seconds at a minimum. And then once I've done that, I can be pretty, pretty assured that it is discharged. And we'll make sure on this one, we'll actually take a voltage test to see. And remember, we charged this with a, uh, a DC source. So we need to set the meter for DC current. So I will do that. And on this particular meter, I have to press the select button to get it into DC mode. It's in AC mode right now. I didn't quite make it there. There we go. Now we're in, in direct current measurement mode. And we'll pretend that we still have current on there, or we, uh, the likelihood of current voltage. And we'll make another measurement on this. And as you can see, we have no voltage present, so we have successfully discharged the capacitor. And now we're able to work with this in any fashion we need to. Thank you for watching us. Be sure and like us and hit the subscribe button. We'll be dropping new videos weekly, usually on Sunday nights. And finally, visit us at takingmeasure.net. We have a lot of content there and also a book available.